as disposable of incomes as we do now. And I just remember people like, oh, yeah, I got paid and you got, you got what? <laughs> and you used to be able to rent the movies, you'd go over to the video store, and you'd be like, you'd have all the VHS, and then, like, the beta section would be like, here, just this wall. That's it. The rest of the store would be all VHS. So it was one, one what page? Switch. All right. Let's take a look at some questions on this. Let me go to the end of our notes. All right. Questions on page 145, 146. Any questions? Yeah. Sure. Number 19. Number 19. Number 19. We have a quantity. Squared equals zero. Okay. So how can I undo if that was like this? How would I undo it? How would I undo the if it was just like square this? Root. Square root. Take the square root, right? And that would give me x equals plus or minus zero, which is just zero, right? Let's do the same thing here. Root root. I don't have to put a plus or minus on the zero when I take the square root because zero doesn't have a plus or a minus. So what's my last step? Add four. Add four. Good. But Done. Actually, mm. Wait, is there on that one, yes, because um, plus or minus zero is the same thing. Is that like doing all that work? Can we just like look in the thing and see if there's a plus or minus? Yeah, if you take the square root of both sides, if you had a number, if, if that wasn't zero, you'd get plus or minus the root of it. Oh. Rom? If I did x minus 4 times x minus 4 and then did it from there. Yeah, you'd be okay. Sure. Do I get it? 20? Yep. All right, number 20, you're going to see, get the two answers. Okay, so if I take the square root of both sides, I get x plus 2 over here, and then I get plus or minus 3. Is that all right? Because the square root of 9 is 3. And because you're taking the square root of both sides, if it just says, hey, what's the square root of 9, then you just put an answer of 3. But if you have to take the square root of both sides, then you uh, have to do it this way. So now I'm going to subtract 2. And this is two problems. So I get negative 2 plus 3, which equals 1. And then I also get, so there's one answer, negative 2 minus 3, which is negative 5. What else? Can you do a plus five? Yeah. Describe and correct the error. OK. These are the square roots. 25, we're trying to find the error. So they said to do this, to do this, bless you, and this. Okay, so that's supposedly the student's work. So we have to find the error. Well, the first thing you should probably look at here is, I should have added 9, added 9. Does that work? So I get x squared is equal to uh, 25. What's up, but... What's that, Omar? Oh, these extras. Oh, uh, So that looks like the first place the error would have taken place, and then the answer would have been plus or minus 5. Because if you take the square root of both sides, so plus or minus 5. There's two. Anytime you take the square root of both sides, you get a positive and a negative component for it. Okay? What else? Two, one? Yeah. Oh, wait. Yes? No? It's okay. Anything else? Two, three? Um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add 8 to both sides. Oh, I already got it, man. All right. I'm waiting. <laughs> All 
All right, uh, if I take the square root of both sides, I have to have plus minus, so I get x equals plus or minus root 18. But then you have to realize that root 18 breaks down to 2 times 9, 9 is 3 times 3, so you're taking the square root. That's going to give you 3 root 2. Is that okay how I did that? Which means this is going to give me x equals plus or minus 3 root 2. So if you got to here on a problem, you would have 2 out of the 3 points. You get down to here, you rationalize, you get the third point. Any other questions from the homework? We good? Yay? Make sure your names are on that and pass that forward. And anything else you might be missing, please, or need to turn in. Yes, sir. Thank you. Oh, wait. I didn't put my name. Perfect. Okay. So, before I hand out our notes for the day, let's let's talk about ax squared plus bx plus c. Standard. Standard form, right? And we never learned this. You'll see this probably in algebra too, but I just wanted to give you a little look at this. If I wanted to take standard form and make it into um, vertex form, you do something called complete the square. Complete the square basically means you're trying to get a, b, and c to be moved to the other side and leaving x on the left side. So I think most of you would say, well, that could be an easy first step. Agree? Again, I want to leave x on the left side. Am I abiding by my rule so far? Okay. I can't have, can't have, um, that so I think if I were to go and say you know what if I were to divide everything by a that would cancel that out and that would leave me x squared plus b over a x equals minus c over a so I've kind of accomplished my goal so far agreed so what I want to do is I want to make, um, I want to make x squared plus b over a times x. I want that to become something I could foil, a perfect square that I could foil out. So watch this. If I said I want half of, if I want half of b over a, how do I take half of a fraction? How do I take half of a fraction? double the denominator. So if I want half of a fraction, I double the denominator. Did I double the denominator by multiplying by 2? Yeah. Okay. So if I take half of that and then I say I want to square it, if I add it to one side, I have to add it to the other side. Okay, you just can't add something to one side. Because if I square this. Oh, okay. So b times b is b squared, 2 times 2 is 4, a times a is a squared. Okay, so if if I wanted to see this right, hang on. If I wanted to, if I wanted to know what that factor down would be, would be x plus b over 2a 
and I have an extra X in there I didn't mean to put in there. If I were to multiply this, if I want X plus B over 2A, and I have it squared, so that means there's two of them. X times X is X squared plus BX over 2A plus BX over 2A plus B squared over 4A squared. So this is X squared plus Oh, I goofed up some place. Oh, I got you. I can then reduce here. This and this are the same thing. Okay? So this is called a complete square. A perfect square trinomial. Perfect square trinomial, where I have the same thing twice. Okay? So let's keep building. And guys and girls, this is not something that you need to know. If I modify this a little bit, my common denominator is going to be 4a squared, so I have to multiply this by a 4 and an a up on top. So I'm going to get minus 4ac plus b squared over 4a squared. Okay. If I rewrote this having b squared first and eliminating signs, I get this. If I want to get x by itself, we just learned this, but I can take the square root of this side and the square root of this side. If I take the square root of this side, I need a plus or minus. That's going to give me x plus b over 2a equals plus or minus b squared minus 4ac. What's the square root of 2a? Or 4a squared? 2a. Okay. If I subtract b minus 2 over a from both sides, You would get, let's do this, negative b over 2a plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4a squared, or ac, all over 2a. I have the same denominator, so I can put this over this. So that's actually what x is equal to of any quadratic. Notice you have A's, B's, and C's on the right side. You also have a 4 and a 2, which are constants. But right there, that is called the quadratic formula. And how you remember the quadratic formula is this. X is equal to negative B plus or minus square root B squared minus 4AC all over 2a. I thought it was Pop Goes Weasel. No. Quadratic formula has been around for way longer than that song. Alright, so this is where this is where we are at. This is where we're going to be today. So that's where we're going to get to. You don't have to learn how to complete the square to get to that. We just, that's where it had come from. I wanted you to see that. Okay? So I didn't, I wasn't just making up some formula. I did the math behind why that formula happened by using something called completing the square, which I know we didn't learn, but it's something that's available for you. Five.
All right, so solving quadratic equations. Why do we have this as number four? I have it as number five. Hang on, see if we're going to be right. Oh, that's right, isn't it? Okay, so how would I start working out this problem? Add six, add six. You good with that? The two x squared is equal to seventy-two. How do I get x by itself? Divide by two. Divide by two. Divide by two. And then I get x squared is equal to 36. If I take the square root of both sides, x is equal to plus or minus 6. Don't forget the plus or minus. You don't want to miss a point. Okay? Problem number two, it is indeed the difference of two squares. So you could create it as x plus 2 and x minus 2, and then set each of those equal to 0. Or I could say I'll add 4 first. So I get x squared is equal to 4. Take the square root. X is equal to what? Positive and a negative 2. Oh, this one. We have to do our magic number of factoring. The magic number is positive 10. But they know both signs have to be negative. I look into a positive there when I multiply, negative there when I add. And then I have 2 and 5. So I get 2x squared minus 2x minus 5x plus 5, I get 2x, that gives me x minus 1, factor out a negative, 5, so that gives me x minus 1, and 2x minus 5, that gives me x equals 1, 2x is equal to 5, x is equal to 5 over 2, two answers. Hmm. Each of them has two answers, yes? There you go. So that next one that we're going to get to, the magic number is negative 2. So what are the factors of 2, one being positive, one being negative, that would add up to negative 4? None of them. So there had to be a way to go through and work it out. And that's where that quadratic formula works. Because remember that quadratic formula, I solved for x. What do each of these say? Solve for x, solve for x, solve for x. And the quadratic formula says solve for x. And the quadratic formula is x equals. Okay. So, things I want to do about this problem. What's my A, my B, and my C values? A is 1. B is what? Negative 4. Negative 4. C is what? Negative 2. wanted it to be solved for x. I have an a, b, and c that I label because it's in standard form. What do you notice about the right side of this? What do you notice about this right side over here? What letters do I have? a, b, and c. What letters did I solve for over there? a, b, and c. Where do you think I would might put some of these? So x is equal to negative. What's b? Oh, why is it positive for? Because it's negative, negative, right? So plus or minus b squared minus 4. That's a constant. stays there. Times a times c all divided by 2 times a. Take a look at that. Does that make sense where the A's, B's, and C's went? Okay, so let's start cleaning this up a little bit. Some of you already recognized that I have a negative negative. Negative negative is positive 4. Agree? Plus or minus comes along for the ride for right now. Got a square root. 
What is negative 4 times negative 4 or negative 4 squared? Positive 16. And then I have negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. Negative 4 times negative 2 is positive 8. Good. So all over 2 times 1, which is 2. Okay. So I get x is equal to 4 plus or minus 16 and 8 add together to give me 24. So all over 2. Can I break root 24 down? That's going to be 2 times 12. 12 is 2 times 6. 6 is 2 times 3. So 2 times 4, 8. Yep, there it is. I'm looking for pairs. So how can I rewrite root 24? 2 squared is 6. Awesome. It's a fraction. We can reduce a fraction. I can reduce this 2 into here and into here. I cannot reduce that 2 inside the radical. Radicals don't work that way. But I'm going to wind up with 2 plus or minus square root 6 all over 1, or 2 plus or minus square root 6. So do you remember when we were graphing those parabolas and we said that it was irrational? Here's your irrational number. Remember when you were, I was asking you this, it didn't fall right on there. I said we know about where it crosses, so we're calling it irrational. 2 plus root 6 and 2 minus root 6 are irrational numbers. That's where it would be crossing the x-axis if it was a parabola still. Cool. It crosses out positive 4 and negative 4. Good. Like 6 and 9, then it would cross at 6 and 9, then the vertex is halfway in between. We'll get there. So, so right now, if this was graphed without knowing too much about it, two plus, square root of 6 is a little bit bigger than 2. Or, yeah, a little bit bigger than 2. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4. So this right about here is about 2 plus root 6. 2 minus root 6 is right about here. So between these two points, our vertex is going to fall. And we know our vertex from negative b over 2a, negative b, so negative 4, negative 4, forward. So at positive 2. The vertex is going to fall somewhere down here. Okay? So that's really what's taking place with this problem. So we're finding now the irrational numbers that x can be equal to. Irrational numbers are indeed part of the real number system. They exist. Okay? So now let's solve. So we said this. We have ax squared plus bx plus c equals to zero. It has to be equal to zero for the quadratic formula to work. It's not move whatever you have over there to the other side. And the quadratic formula, we say it only so many times, is x is equal to negative e plus or minus squared root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. No, you have the song that it just gave you. So I wonder if this will work. Wow. I used to. Me too. I just do it. I got it for you. Let's do that. Copy. What is YouTube No, I don't know. No, I just Oh, yeah, that's right. You can copy Oh, Okay. 
problem we just worked out. This problem is right here. It's done. So we already worked that problem. You wrote the notes. We haven't worked out. So three slides back, right? Okay. So let's see. This first problem, trust me on the factory, comes out to x plus 2 x plus 3 equals 0. So x is equal to negative 2, x is equal to negative 3. Okay? If you use the quadratic formula, you know that a is equal to 1, b is equal to 5, c is equal to 6. So x is equal to negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2ax that's minus uh, that's 25 oh 25 minus 24 help me out one there you go the square root of 1 is equal to what cool negative 5 plus 1 Negative 4. Negative 4 divided by 2. Negative 2. Negative 5 minus 1. Negative 6. Negative 6 divided by 2. Check. Check. Work. Take it. All right. It's not equal to zero. Subtract 20 from both sides. So 2x squared minus 6x minus 20 equals zero. What can I do? divide each side by? Or divide everything by? x squared minus 3x minus 10 equals 0. Let's see if we can factor it. The factors should work as this and this. Did I do that right? So then I have x equals 5 and x is equal to negative 2. I know that it doesn't matter which one I pick, so I'll pick this one for my a, b, and c's. So what's my a value down there? 1. B value is? Negative 3. C value is? Okay. It didn't matter if I used the reduced version or not. They'll both come out the same. So x is equal to negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac. All over 2a. All right, clean it up. Negative, negative is? Three, positive. Positive. Negative 3 quantity squared is? Nine. Nine. My, my plus, negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. Negative 4 times negative 10 is positive 40. All over 2 times 1. What's 9 plus 40? 49. What's special about 49? It's a square. perfect square, isn't it? So x is equal to 3 plus or minus 7 over 2. 3 plus 7? 10. 10 divided by 2? 3 minus 7? Negative 4. Negative 4 divided by 2? Check. Check. Work on both. So that's just showing that the factoring, we already know how to factor and find the answers. 
and the quadratic formula work hand in hand. Okay, if you happen to have a perfect square root under the radical sign, once you're done with b squared minus 4ac, which is called the radicand, um, it's going to have rational answers, meaning we'll know exactly where across the x-axis. But then I get to this one, factoring x x my magic number is negative 6 so I have to have plus or minus I have 1 and 6 and 2 and 3 is there any way that's going to work and get me positive 4 nope so this is one of those ones you would have said it was prime which means it creates irrational answers so what's my a value 1, B value, C value, cool. Oh, know the song if you know it. X is equal to negative B plus or minus square root B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. What you guys doing in algebra today? We sang nursery rhymes. 16, all right. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. Negative 4 times negative 6 is positive 24. All over 2. Negative 4 plus or minus 40 over 2. Hmm, I bet you we could break 40 down. 40 breaks down to 2 times 20. 20 breaks down to 2 times 10. 10 breaks down to 2 times 5. 2 root 10, good. It is a fraction, so we can reduce. I can reduce here, here, and here, not inside the radical. So that gives me negative 2 plus or minus root 10 all over 1. That's my answer. That's my irrational answer. What do you think? Impossible? Did you add a few things? Gentry, are you okay? We're singing nursery rhymes. Yeah. You okay? No, I'm not. I, I'm just tired. <laughs> Smack himself around. That's it. That's it. Oh. 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 Sorry. Oh. Rob's got his song down. Factoring. Oh, let's see if our magic number works. Uh, positive six. Yes. And then I need negative, negative. The factors of 6 are 1 and 6 and 2 and 3. Any way that's going to work to give me negative 4? Nope. So my A value is 2. My B value is? My C value is? X is equal to negative B plus or minus square root B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. All right, ready? Negative 4 times 2. Negative 8. Negative 8 times 3. Negative 24 over 4. Uh oh. What happened? What happened on this one? What's underneath the radical sign? Four. Four is? Oh, is negative. That a oh. Negative. 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 Negative eight. I have a negative. Note. Note, everybody. Negative. That's an NRS. So does NRS with a parabola across the x-axis? No. So this is the solution. And if you were like a varsity math student, you would realize that you would break this down to this, which then breaks down pretty simple. And that is actually your complex answer. Only if you wanted to take it that far. I'd say if you get to here, you got an A. A plus? 
A plus 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 is when you get into that complex solution. So that's you get to that last, uh, you get to that very last solution. That's the one that you hang up on the fridge at home, going, "Dude, look!" Is A equal to negative B plus square root. Rom is tone deaf. <laughs> and we can't find the right. What do you think? Easy enough? All right, ladies and gentlemen. Worksheet page 147, 148. For tomorrow. That tomorrow. There'll be sun. <laughs>